So, I have a question, a simple question. Do you know what you would do if I told you right now? I know from a reliable source, the Ministry of Health itself, that starting tonight, the metro handles are being cleaned with a highly radioactive product. Well, we know most of you <laughs> would have the reflex of running of uh, your, your loved ones. Why? Because we are animals. Yes, all of us. <laughs> Descendants of primates. And in the animal world, running the rest of the group is vital. And that is what contributes to the survival of species. So, rushing to relate to or false information is actually an ancestral reflex. But what is fake news? This is false information, information that is often deliberately faked. This process of launching rumors has existed for a long time and was used before to disqualify dignitaries, for example. Today, many studies have shown how widespread the circulation of fake news is, and how social networks have amplified this phenomenon. An MIT study conducted for two years by Sinan Aral studied 126,000 tweets, both real and fake, and these tweets were posted by 3 million people and then shared more than 4.5 million times. Their results show that true information takes six times longer to reach 1,500 people on Twitter than false information. This clearly shows that lies spread significantly further, faster, deeper and wider than the truth in all categories of, inform of information, with more pronounced effects in politics. So, why do we believe fake news? What guides our preferences, our judgments, our decisions? Let me introduce Steve and Susie. Steve is a good guy who decides very quickly what he's going to believe. He makes most of his decisions instinctively and he considers something true or false without using too many cognitive resources. In automatic mode, he applies his known or stereotyped responses. For example, if I ask him to give me the name of a tool, he will surely quickly answer a hammer or a screwdriver, and not a pair of pliers or wood cheese. You have probably all done the same, right? right. <laughs> so Steve is fast, intuitive, and emotional, but a warp one. Suzy? On the other hand, can't make a single decision without taking the time to analyze the problem from different angles. She needs irrefutable evidence. So she is always putting in effort, being more methodical, working by trial and error, and so she can develop complex concepts. If I ask her, to uh, the result of an equation with double unknowns. <laughs> Raphael can do this, <laughs> but she will need to put it down on paper and probably also need to go back to the mathematics books to review all the methods. So this thinking is thoughtful, controlled, and more logical. However, it's slower and more laborious. Steve and Susie are the allegory of what the psychologist Daniel Kahneman has explained to us. How does the mind work when it has to sort through information? For him, for Daniel Kahneman, we have a reasoning organization split into two parts, System 1 and System 2. Nothing to do with the two brain hemispheres. Susie and Steve form a complementary couple on a daily basis. Indeed, Steve makes decisions regularly and quickly without too much impact. And Susie so questions herself more when necessary. And in every life, for decisions to be made very quickly, Susie so cannot function like that. For example, what clothes to wear this morning according to the weather? 
Steve looks out the window and he remembers that the weather forecast was yesterday. So he decides on shorts. Susie would have had to work longer and study the subject to make, uh, uh, to make precise meteorological uh, readings and comparative studies. <coughs> this clearly can't work with all the decisions we have to make in a split second. But in fact, Steve, with his intuition, his spontaneity, regularly makes mistakes. He feels that he should have consulted Susie for her opinion. So, let's get back to the fake news. How to explain that people with advanced degrees and with years of experience still have doubts on subjects on which person like Steve has only certainties? Let's focus on the processes put in place by Steve. There are flow of thinking. These flow, flows are called cognitive biases. Four of them um, are recognized as being factors promoting belief in fake news. We could also consider that these four cognitive biases are in fact four character traits for Steve. Number one, Steve hates changing his mind. It's called confirmation biases by Kahneman. Confirmation biases is the instinctive tendency of the human mind which consists in hating to change one's mind and therefore a person will favor information that confirms their way of thinking and neglect anything that could challenge it. For example, Steve, when he wants to change his car and dreams of buying an Audi, will tend to look for all the articles that prize the merits of his favorite brands and will ignore the articles that criticize it. So, of course, he feels that his choice is the right one. And he's really tend to change his mind, feels like an Audi expert, only because he never challenged his initial choice. Audi expert? That's good for Steve, isn't it? Yes, but not really. Number two, Steve shows off all the time. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. This phenomenon has been described by psychologist David Dunning and Justin Kruger in 1999. This is another human paradox according to which the less skills you have in a field, the more you tend to believe yourself competent. This is quite easily explained. The less skills we have in the field, the less we are aware of the extent of our ignorance. And in fact, when you start to acquire some competence in a field, you have the impression of knowing everything. And then, very quickly, you also realize everything you don't know and what you have still to learn. Sting, having read an article on the risk factors of cancerology in a random journal, thinks he has the same skills of a medical cancerologist who, in addition to his study, has many years of experience. So, did any of you feel during the pandemic, for example, that many people, the many friends maybe, <laughs> become experts in the medical field overnight? <laughs> Number three, Steve likes familiar things and way way to the rest of the rest. It's called the mere exposure effect. The more we are exposed to something, the more positive it seems to us. In other words, the more we are exposed to a stimulus, product, person, brand, music, smell, the more likely we are to like or appreciate it. But these preferences take place without that having been any interaction with the stimulus, no reflection on the part of the subject. Hence the expression simple exposure. It was described by Robert Zajong, which was an experiment where meaningless words presented as Turkish were exposed to subjects between 1 and 25 times. Words, meaningless words, presented more often were judged to have a more positive meaning than words presented rarely. Advertising uses this technique a lot. For example, 
while watching the match of his favorite football team, Steve did not realize that the stadium was lined with Audi logos, which obviously had one fourth his desire for this specific car. And so, when Steve hears fake news once, he will tend to adhere to it more directly if it comes back, for example, in, in his social media thread. And it will. And more he feels that it was, the more he will relay this information himself on social media. Number four, Steve analyzes things too quickly. It's the causality effect. Correlation doesn't mean causation, as <laughs> Raphael say. When things coincide, we tend to weave a causal line between them. This mechanism of the brain allows us to understand the world in a linear way. And, however, it's often a coincidence, nothing more. Take this example. Steve knows that in the summer there are more deaths by drowning. He also knows that in the summer we eat more ice cream. For him, it, became, it becomes very simple. That the more ice cream you eat, the more drowning there are. So we can see here that there is a problem, right? Well, can we be clear? We all have in ourselves a little of Steve and a little of Susie. We use the two systems of thinking differently depending on the situation and our nature. Facing fake news, there are few tips to keep Steve's worst instinct from playing tricks on us to keep in mind. Check your sources, always. If you doubt the information, look for other points of view on the topic. Check what are the scientific credentials of the author and expert who are giving an opinion. Check what uh, many fact-checking sites exist in every field. Never relay unverified information. It can be dangerous. And finally, let's remember that correlation doesn't mean causation. And to conclude, try to always keep an open mind. And now, what do you think? Would you prefer your news with or without that? Thank you for your attention. Yeah.